in downtown Detroit. It's Jason Carr Live with your host, Jason Carr. Thank you, Johnny Olson. You're quite welcome. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> A sulfur fire creates a hazmat situation in northern Wyoming. The flames look like they're licking the sky in this video from the local volunteer fire department. Captain Brandon Yule. Isn't that mesmerizing? That is. Burning sulfur creates a hazardous gas called sulfur dioxide, which is a very strong choking smell. Hazmat crews were able to contain and extinguish the fire. This is uh, coming to us from our on-the-scene correspondent, uh, Captain Brandon Yule, uh, founder of the Yule Law. Uh, is your mic not on? My mic was on. Okay, yeah, no, it's just cutting in and out. Maybe it's just on my headphones. Everything's good. Amazing right. video, though. See, that audio issue made you miss a quality joke I just made. I it's know. okay. It's all right. Next stop, Avian Station, a.k.a. Mine the Gap. <laughs> oh, Mine the Gap. And that's it. That's uh, the London Tube. Apparently this uh, pigeon makes his, makes his daily commute. Mine the Gap. Boink. <laughs> Daily commute for that? Yeah, daily commute. I don't know. It is strange how birds, uh, birds, and this is. You mean like the ducks at the Ambassador Hotel in Memphis? Mm hmm. Or uh, not the Ambassador, the Peabody. Sorry. My apologies. Uh, Peabody Hotel in downtown Memphis. They have ducks that ride the elevator from the fountain on the top to the fountain on the bottom. Really? Oh, that's fascinating. It's a very cool story. I stayed back there in 2001 covering the Spartans as they made their way through the NCAAs the year after they won it all. Bill Murray and his five brothers set to open a second Caddyshack-themed restaurant near their Illinois hometown of Wilmette, north of Chicago. It will have a pool and a pond. The pond would be good for you, though. <laughs> uh, first location is in St. Augustine, Florida. As teenagers, the boys spent their summers working as caddies at a local private country club, and that's what led to them doing the movie. And he says, oh, uh, there won't be any money. But when you die on your deathbed, you will receive total consciousness. So I got that going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I was able to ask the Dalai Lama a question once upon a time on uh, University of Michigan's campus when he came to visit within the last decade, and I wish I could remember what I asked him because it made him laugh. Did it? Yeah, I, I made the Dalai Lama laugh in front of a crowd of people at a, like a, a press conference. So the Dalai Lama goes to order a pizza and he <laughs> says, can you make me one with everything? <laughs> uh, rich and compelling, now this. No, oh, you? Yeah, not me. There it is. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy Claus wants to know who is Eric Carr? I don't know. Eric Carr was the drummer for Kiss. A drummer for Kiss. Oh, it's because Alicia Taylor said that. Okay, I thought I had a typo somewhere. Yeah, okay. so did I. Our old friend Sandy Claus. Sandy Claus. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti, or if you prefer Garcetti, says LA is aiming its Olympic bid firmly at the 2024 Summer Games. Uh, Los Angeles and Paris are competing to stage the 2024 and 2028 games in presentations to the International Olympic Committee in Switzerland today. Of course, given recent um, reports and uncoverings and whatnot, uh, it makes you wonder what goes into 
landing the games. It's it's so expensive to host the games. They should have one city that does it every four years from now on till the end of time. Build one really big stadium. Have you ever seen the um, the remnants of the Sarajevo Olympics it's overgrown? Sad, yeah, I mean, the, the, even the uh, the ones in Rio from just oh, last year. Please. Are the Olympics outdated? Mm. Have we reached a point in human history where the Olympics are maybe not as important as they used to be? I thought the ESPN, the magazine uh, story about what goes on behind the scenes was pretty fascinating. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The athletes. About. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that, you know, it used to be all country pride and, you know, the, the flag and, and uh, patriotism and, uh, oh, we have more gold medals than you. Apparently, behind the scenes, it's all... And that should be to nobody's surprise because you're talking about young 20-something athletes in their prime, physically fit to within a micromillimeter of their lives, competing on a world stage, on television. You gotta break the tension. Well, supposedly, back in the day, it was frowned upon uh, because that would sap your strength, but mm -hmm. through the heck knows. A uh, miraculous rescue after a lion cub fell down an 80-foot well in India. Local villagers called in emergency crews after spotting the two-year-old female Asiatic lion in the well. Crews lowered a man in a protective cage. Man goes in the cage. Cage goes in the water. Sharks in the water. <laughs> anyway, uh, rescuers were eventually able to get a lasso around the lion and pull her out of the well. This happened in a village about 100 miles north of a national park that's the world's last refuge for wild Asiatic lions. Well, what's amazing about this story is they found out that the lion was in the well because a collie came and told them. And Timmy, too? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> bark, bark, bark. What's that, Lassie? There's a lion down the well. Bark, 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 bark. And its name is such and such, and it's two and a half years old, and... Uh, tiger versus duck. Which animal is quickest, the Pantera tigris or the Anus platyrrhinoceros? Yeah, I gave you the Latin names. Thanks a lot. Which is faster? Oh, where'd he go? Where'd that duck? Oh, he's over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the duck. The duck wins. Quack, 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 quack. I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for this <laughs> porn swaggle and duck. This fall, Saturday mornings on NBC, horn swaggle and duck. <laughs> John, you missed out. Saturday mornings were great. Yeah, I would imagine. Well, when I was young, we still had, I, it was more of the reruns, though. I mean, I still watched Rocky and Bullwinkle and uh, a whole, it, what was Yeah, it, but there was underdog. a time where, like, to learn what... CBS, NBC, ABC's summer lineup was going to be, or a fall lineup was going to be on Saturday mornings, like learning there was a new cartoon called Plastic Man or Thundar the Barbarian or Captain Caveman or whatever. Yeah. Or uh, Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt. Brand new from the creators of Scooby-Doo, Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt this fall. You, like your seven-year-old brain would just... <laughs> Some of you of a certain age out there know what I'm talking about. And then you get the weekly TV guide, and it was this. Oh! You had to circle the things and put the whole weekly schedule. Mm -hmm. I got it. I got it. And get at, at 1 p.m., I'm watching Sir Graves Gasly. <laughs> 3.30 on Channel 50 is Creature Feature. Star Trek at 5 o'clock. Oh, Randy's asking about the Bill Murray restaurant. We already talked about it, but we'll come back around when we get closer to the end of the show. Yeah, this is live. This happens in real time. So if you join uh, late via your news feed, sometimes we've already moved on from something. Shelly says, damn, Jason, you're old. <laughs> Sir Graves Gasly. Sir Graves Gasly. That's exactly how he laughed. Okay. Yeah, Lawson J. Deming, real name. Uh, oh, this one's hilarious. You ready? Piggyback driver? Yeah. 
Not Baby Driver. No. This is the one I sent you. Yeah. <laughs> they have sound? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's just some rock music, but this is, uh, it's not a, out yet. This is just debuted at the New York Maker Fair. And they're looking for um, funds to be able to put this into production, but boy, it looks like a terrible idea. It looks like something that would uh, if affect your frontal lobe, uh -huh. injure your neck, and give your child a false sense of control over you as the parent. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I would imagine the turbo button is just, you know, it, it, that, that always works. Uh, but the horn, can the horn be disabled? <laughs> Does the turbo button give you a jolt of caffeine? Causing you to run faster if you're the if you're the parental unit. It reminds me of the saddle. Remember the uh, the saddle you could wear and ride the kids around. Right. Do you remember that? Several mm -hmm. months ago, we had a bit of video that showed a saddle that you would put on Dad's back and ride him like a horse. Could you imagine having the saddle and the helmet at the same time? Okay. Yeah. I still have the saddle. Ready? How did you find that? I've that been, was a plan. No, it really wasn't. <laughs> Is there a narration to this? No. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that toy and this toy put together could make the ultimate worst thing ever. That's true. Today in Screen Actors Guild Cattle Call News, they are looking for hipster parent types to record in New York City. Um, we're not gonna tell you what it is, but if you're hired, you'll be paid scale plus lunch. <laughs> and then all the actors show up and then they find out they have to be, they act like a horse. Yeah. How many do you suppose walked away? I'm joking. I don't even know if it was a union call. <laughs> panda Watch. A giant panda born in the USA celebrated his 12th birthday over the weekend at a panda research center in China. Uh, Taishan uh, received birthday wishes from both the U.S. and China and enjoyed some special birthday treats. He was born at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. and was the first panda cub at the zoo to live past his first 100 days and receive a name. Which I guess is like Chinese tradition. That's a really cool idea that you wait until a child or an animal, I guess in this case, has a personality to name it. Um, but what do you think he's eating here? I, I don't. I mean, I see some bamboo, they're, they're plenty of ice. But what else? Are those carrots? You know, I'm not sure it's true of this uh, bear, but the polar bears at the Detroit Zoo, you would vomitosa if you saw what they make their popsicles out of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll let your imagination do the uh, wandering, but they give the polar bears uh, popsicles with, you know how you don't, you're better off knowing not, not what, uh, what's not in hot dogs? You don't want to know what's in snouts. A, yeah, oh, yeah? Tails, <laughs> hooves, you know, that sort the of thing. Leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> Lips and mm hmm. Um, you're better off not knowing what they give the polar bears at the Detroit Zoo in their popsicle sticks. <laughs> Rich and Compelling Part 2. That's a dog. Well, and he seems to have better balance than the other guy. <laughs> He's <laughs> completely unfazed by it. <laughs> it's a beach blanket bingo. <laughs> Where is this even? And where did they find the Jethro Bodine look-alike to actually stand next <laughs> to the dog? You see what he does before he almost wipes out? He tries a little hang loose. Yeah. Right? Or did I miss that? I mean to tell you, Swade Moyers is one heck of a surfer. Hang loose, Swade. Whoa, look out there. <laughs> Helen says, I have seen how they make the popsicles, LOL. Don't eat lunch or dinner that day.
Ed says, don't say it. Yikes, according to James. Vicky Voakis, Rural Manap, says, vomitosa. Love the new word. Vomitosa. <laughs> it sounds like a late night horror host. Good From the evening. Latin vomitorium. Good evening, my friends. It is vomitosa. Welcoming you to Chum Bucket Theater. McDonald's restaurants in Liverpool and Gloucester are subtly controlling uh, drunk customers by playing Bach and Mozart. Yeah, this is fa uh, fascinating. I guess they've been they've been doing this for a little while. And what did they say? It it has uh, they've noticed more acceptable behavior from their drunk customers late at night by playing classical music. Uh, McDonald's said they had tested the method before, finding that playing the music did affect the mood of the customers. There was a study earlier this year that tested the effects of music on fast food uh, customers, finding that playing Ed Sheeran's Shape of You actually helped increase sales by 9%. 9%. Nine percent. Nine percent. Nine times. Nine times. Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> nine I don't remember times. him being absent nine times. <laughs> Do we have an uh, Alicia Taylor says Eric Carr is funny. Love him. <laughs> She's right. That Eric Carr does have like <laughs> you know when he, when he's not uh, time traveling as the drummer for Kiss <laughs> into the present day to crack jokes on a small but beloved web series like this. Eric Carr is hilarious. Number nine. Number nine. Finally, unless I happen to go on and tell a long story about signing up for Shipped. Oh, yeah, let's do that. You want to do that before the last thing? Sure. Okay, let's, let's see how far uh, down we can drive our live viewing numbers by engaging in a little uh, monologuing here. Uh, time and circumstance, uh, being away from home, um, led me to signing up on all, of all days, Amazon Prime Day. I actually went the other direction and supported Meyer of Michigan and shipped S H I P T, the app that Meyer is partnering with. And I did grocery shopping uh, from not home, but a third location, and then arrived home in time to accept delivery of said groceries. Well, that's convenient. Ask me questions, John. I'll tell you no lies how it works. Did you buy any alcohol? Because that's the new new. That was the news yesterday. Was that they're adding alcohol? They're adding al alcohol today. Um, the fact that they're adding alcohol would put shipped in the news yesterday on Prime Day, which can't be coincidental. Mm -hmm. I mean, that can't be <laughs> accidental. Um, so anyway, so that got me to thinking. I had time on my hands um, while we were waiting on something, and I, I decided, well, let's sign up. And so I went, downloaded the app signed up gave them you know a credit card uh address and then paired it with meyer and my meyer store that's three minutes from our house or three miles i should say and then i went shopping i bought probably 12 or 14 items everything from fruit for our daughter to reynolds wrap um bacon of course and you know send or sold or whatever and then a few hours later, I got a text from a personal shopper at Meyer in Southfield who said, hi, it's Chris. Uh, I'm shopping right now. Is there anything you want to add to your list? What'd you tell him? I said, no, I'm good. I'm good. And so Aww. then a few minutes later, he, uh, he texts me and he says, we're all out of the bacon that you wanted. Do you want the Meyer brand instead? And I said, sure. And then he texts back a few minutes later, we don't have this other item you wanted. And I said, no, pass. I don't need that. Long story short, he says, I'm checking out now. This is all via text to my phone. And then he says, I'm leaving now. And sure enough, 10 minutes later, bing bong, it's like ordering a pizza. This guy is on my front porch with four plastic bags of everything that I ordered. I had gone on to um, Google and I said, do I tip shipped drivers, shoppers? Yeah. And the answer was unequivocally, yes, Yeah. you should. So I tipped him, you know, hey, thanks a lot. Good night, good night. He
pads off to his car, jumps into his car, and off he goes. He's like a, he was like a pizza delivery guy that went to Meyer and did some shopping for you. Well, and you wonder how many, uh, how many orders he fulfilled, like if he's got more groceries in the back and he's doing all of his stops at once, or if he just goes back and forth to the grocery store. But, you know, it, you remember the old way back when, when you'd load the family on the wagon and spend a day going into town to do your shopping? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> Are you are you calling me old? No, no, I remember those days too. I well, I do. I hope that we don't get away from this too far because when I was a kid out at the out the lake, mm-hmm. where's Grandpa? He's out the lake. Um, when I'd be out there, you know, eight, nine, ten years old with Grandma and Grandpa Carr, invariably there would be a, a trip into town to Schmidt's, Schmitz. which is really at the corner of US 12 and Jackson Road. There was a bait shop there, a pizza parlor a bank and a Schmidt's supermarket, which is like an IGA kind of thing. And, um, you know, that was kind of magical to go up and down the aisles at Schmidt's and, and you know, pick out booberry mm-hmm. and Hostess cupcakes and green seedless grapes and whatever else we stocked up on for the weekend and then take it back out to the lake there in the Irish Hills. You know, if everything comes to the front porch via Amazon Prime and shipped, are kids missing out on the whole grocery store thing? I mean, when was the last time you went to the mall? Probably around oh. Christmas, you know. But How about that mall that, that flooded the other day on the yeah. 4th of July? Who's at the mall on, four, on the 4th of July that would even notice the place was flooding? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I've got that. Hey, guys, I tried shipped. How was it? Great. They didn't, they didn't have everything that I ordered, but the guy was, like, right on it. He sent me texts. Oh, we're out of that. Do you want something else? No, I'm good. And he shows up at my door like the pizza delivery guy, and I tip him, and away he goes. And I got four bag, bags of groceries. Not, it's not available until today. Try it later. Try it later. The, the millennials on the other side of the screen, the first thing. You try the booze? I'll be over at 7. All right, Ken. So this was the flooding at the mall. Where was this? North Dakota? I guess that's how they celebrate, you know, 4th of July in North Dakota. They go uh, to the mall. And this one flooded. Vicky says Kroger does click lists, basically the same idea. You park in front of the store and you bring it out and you put it in your car. Not exactly the same as like Bing Bong. Here's it's like Amazon Prime, but instead of coming from Huntsville, Alabama, Alabama via Postal Service, it's actually coming. This guy had a, he identified himself and everything. I mean, my my personal cell phone or work cell phone, depending on how you want to look at it. Yeah, no, Chris, that guy that guy's great. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jason. This is your shipped shopper, Christopher. I'll be starting your order shortly. Please feel free to text if you have any additions. The store does not have the fully uh, the requested product, Tyson Fully quick, uh, Cooked Fun Nuggets. They're these little dino-shaped uh-huh. nuggets from Tyson. Oh, I know them. Oh. Um, so they were out of those. Is the Meyer brand okay? And I said, uh, no, don't worry about that one because my, my daughter's sort oh, of specific it's be about the, right the nuggets. One. You, can't, you can't go going off also, on brand. Also, the 16 ounce package of bacon uh, out, but they do have the 12 ounce size. That's fine, thanks, I wrote back. Cool, the lines are long tonight, but I'll message when I'm on my way. Hi Jason, I've completed your order. I'm on my way to deliver your groceries. I should be there in 10 minutes. And 10 minutes later, so I'm walking up, open the door, boom, 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 right into the cupboards and the fridge. See, now, Meyer has so much stuff, and more than just food, what you need to do is put together a very strange order, the weirdest stuff you can think that Meyer has. All right, so can you take that full? Yeah, the bird? Yes. So this bird brought groceries from Meyer to my front door. Christopher the Pigeon. Christopher the Pigeon, yeah. This has attracted the attention of noted bird snatcher Jason Colthorpe, <laughs> who has arrived on scene to weigh in. Very curious about this bird. What's he up to? What does he ha- What's he think? What does he know that we don't know here? Well, he's got a busy That's day in the, the in the city, you know? Just moving around, checking things out. You know why? This the floor looks like it's bird seat. <laughs> That's true. Right there, that yeah. he's like, that's got nope, that's, that's a pebble. Here. See, the reason this bird is acting so peculiar is he's actually really old. He still remembers. He's haunted by the filming of American Werewolf in London back in 1979, <laughs> and he has been 
wandering the tube ever since, <laughs> sort of traumatized by the sort of uh, sight of David Naughton uh, turning into a werewolf. His I'm not sure. Analyst died. Two years ago, and he's been wandering aimlessly with no one to talk to. This bird's in trouble, people. He's going to be jumping off a ledge. Wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. They don't make movies like American Werewolf in London anymore. How about a nice Jim Naughton reference? Um, he was the Dr. Pepper guy, uh, the star American of American Idol. Werewolf in London. Oh. I tried um, Meyer... David Naughton. I, I tried Meyer Shipped yesterday, you know, where they bring the groceries the right to your door. Hey, yeah. Not the booze. No, that doesn't start until today. We actually were out of flu, uh, fruit for Gia. Um, so time and circumstance, we weren't home. Thought, oh, okay, we'll try this. And sure enough, they said between 7 and 8 p.m., the driver would show up at the door, and he made it by 8. What, what jumped out to me there is we ran out of food for Gia. No, fruit. Oh, fruit. <laughs> fruit. <laughs> fruit. No. Like, no, we would never run out of know, food. <laughs> red flag, red flag. No. Well, that's good. Now we'll see if they can show up on time for the booze. All right, I, I nominate you to try that. Sign up. John well, has already volunteered to, well, no, you live downtown, so you're out of the run. You've got to get Rod and I. We did, our, we did our how we would report this story. You know, we've been getting this all day, and we think this is good. Idea. Didn't Nick do this story yesterday? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did. We think it's a great idea. Back to you, Kevin. Devin. Right. <laughs> yes. Whatever the hell your name yes. is. Um, Sandy Claus says she only knows because she's a horror movie nerd. Knows what? David Naughton, yeah. David Naughton had a song called Making It. Making It? Yeah, for a couple of years there, between 79 and 81, when American Werewolf came out, David Naughton was like, you know, he was right there. And nobody remembers the poor guy now, except yeah. for the movie being the guy that was on the Dr. Pepper commercial and having a minor hit song called Making It. I'll have to listen to it after this. Yeah, we'll have to listen to it off the show. Edward Dyer says, bird terrorist. That's why he's using Subway, or The Subway. Hmm. You ever heard of a movie called Birdemic? No. Birdemic? No. I mean, I know You've the heard of The birds. Room, right? What is it? The Room? Uh, the which best one? worst movie ever. Yes, of course, of course. Right now they're making a movie about, about the, the making room, of, yeah. the, of the room. Okay, so there's another movie out there that you can find online on YouTube called Birdemic, that was made unironically as an Alfred Hitchcock style, The Birds, but newer, and it is so horrendously bad that it is absolutely worth a look. Yeah, no, The Room is incredible. I, I remember Tommy Wiseau. It, it, Wiseau, 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 uh, Wiseau. But the the Burton Theater over on Cass, they they play a lot of those indie flicks and weird cult classics, and uh, that one's you you've got to see in the whole group setting because there's all sorts of things you're supposed to do during the. It's during like the, the new show. Rocky Horror. Yeah. All right, let's uh, fire up sulfur in Wyoming. Flames look like they're licking the sky in this video. Uh, from the local vi volunteer fire department and our correspondent on the scene, Captain Brandon Ewell of the Ewell Log Satellite Office of WDIV. Captain Brandon Ewell. Mm -hmm. Logging in from Wyoming with his video of burning sulfur. So what color would you call that? Blue? The, the color on the ground? On the ground, yeah. Oh boy, uh, Violet, you're turning violet. <laughs> wow, that's what sulfur <laughs> looks like when it's on fire. And no, Clifford, it's actually because that's the reason the story is, or shipped is suddenly in the news right around Amazon Prime Day. Yeah which I don't think is coincidental at all. That is totally on purpose that, that shipped the app would say, hey, by the way, you can get alcohol if you use us as a delivery service on the same day that Amazon Prime begins. It's actually very um, clever marketing. I mean, are you, are you going on Amazon today? What about our viewers? Uh, who's, who's buying stuff on Amazon today? We got a, a lot of stuff you guys need because there's nothing I really need. Like, I don't, I don't have any need to go on Amazon right now and, like, No, you'd be doing so just as a sucker for Amazon Prime. Exactly. 
But there's a lot of people who like put off buying things until they're until Amazon Prime Day. Well, is this bigger than Black Friday now? I I'm not sure. Is that story on uh, Nick's story from yesterday about shipped delivering booze? Is that on ClickOn? It ought to be. Okay. What time was it? What time is what? Right what now? Time did it air? Oh, uh, during the five o'clock show. It should have gotten pulled. Or was it at like quarter after four? Maybe it was quarter after four. Yeah, actually, I think it was during the four. I think I. I wrote that in the list of things to get pulled. Vicky Vowakis Rua Manap says, my husband and I both need new phone cases. Probably order those. Oh, John. Hmm. I'm not going to divulge the identity of this uh, extended family member to whom we were telling the SNL skit about Odessa and Alexa uh -huh. and Contessa and all the names that, like... It, do you know the SNL skit where they take uh, Amazon uh, Echo, also known as Alexa, and give her the silver treatment for the older generation, the greatest generation? Hold because on, I've got it. I've, okay. I've, I don't know what's with this computer lately, but I've been able to search a little bit quicker and find some of our older content. So, there. This happened in real life. The new Amazon Echo has everyone asking Alexa for help. Alexa, what time is it? What the hell is wrong with this? Blasted thing. Amanda! But the latest technology isn't always easy to use for people of a certain age. These kids done bought me a busted machine again. Odessa! That's why Amazon partnered with AARP to present the new Amazon Echo Silver, the only smart speaker device designed specifically to be used by the greatest generation. It's super loud and responds to any name even remotely close to Alexa, so they can find out the weather. Allegra, what is the weather outside? It is 74 degrees and sunny. Huh? It is 74 degrees and sunny. Where? Outside. What about it? The temperature outside is 74 degrees and sunny. I don't know about that. <laughs> the latest in sports. <laughs> so what was, uh, what was the story? Okay, so in real life, um, this happened where I was playing this for somebody who watched it laughed heartily and then turned to our Alexa and said, Alexis, <laughs> unironically, <Yeah. laughs> which I thought was hysterical. It was a good laugh. <laughs> to see it play out for real after having shown somebody the video, Alexis, Maria Couch Cauchi buys everything on Amazon, floaters, oils, uh, vitamin E, butter, Kids' toys, home containers. Fahad says, I need this. If Amazon was smart, they would try to market this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 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 Amazon Echo Silver. I mean, I, you know, I got to tell you, it does look good with that wood trim. And the, I mean, that's not, it looks a lot better than the black ones. Yeah, and it. You know that, that metal they got on there? It looks like something like a fireplace or a hand warmer from like the 1940s. It's so awesome. Oh, Dessa! Hey, this is the one dollar right here. Uh-huh. So, I mean, you tell me who's crazy. Amazon Echo Silver. <laughs> get yours today. I said get yours today. To order Amazon Echo Silver, set a checker money. How many strikeouts did Satchel Paige have last night? Satchel Paige died in 1982. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, look at Sandy Claus. I know. Wow. Wow. <laughs> no shame so, in that one. <laughs> I like buying heavy stuff from Amazon. My UPS driver looks good carrying it, says Sandy Claus, <laughs> whose real name is Sandy Claus. <laughs> Oh, hey, Bobby Pataglia. He says, I hey, love Bobby. SNL. Whoa, hey, hey, whoa. Hey. hey, whoa. Vicky's dad asks Alexa everything. Well, you know what you can do now is you can set it. Uh, 
Right now, I think it's only for local four weather. So you can you can set your app to be specifically designed so you can ask it about the weather in Detroit, and it will play our local four forecast from whoever we pulled that video from earlier in the day. I mean, it's only going to play the audio for you. But uh, pretty soon, we're going to be able to work up to having uh, the news, actually. You'd be able to take this and have a whole news spread that it would read these stories to you. But for right now, you can do the weather, which is kind of cool. Vicky Voikas Ruam and Knapp says, maybe shipped would have saved my kid's staples in his head back in 2003. Kids chasing each other through Kroger, and my son ran backward into a post and split his head open. Not Kroger's fault. No. But if you'd had your groceries delivered, who knows? Now, does Meyer deliver everything or just groceries? No, that, like, I, I encourage you to check it out. We'll talk more about this coming up in a few minutes on Live in the D, the whole shipped thing. But um, there's a, I mean, I could have gotten, how was the meeting? It was good. Yeah, we didn't get to any of your stuff, though, so we got to do a like, conference call. Cool. Um, you can order windshield wiper fluid and, you know, stuff that's not in the grocery aisle, mm -hmm. essentially bird feed. I suppose if Meyer sells it, they'll ship it. Yeah. Including cool. booze or beer and wine at least. All right, I have to run. Uh, Live in the D's coming up here in about seven minutes. Stay classy, Detroit.